I've worked with people who are excellent in their work, uh, but they'd get married, they'd go through a toxic lifestyle, new lifestyle, and their work style changes completely. Mm -hmm. And uh, people who work with them, they might think, um, as the manager, if I'm going to work with such a person, they might think, okay, this person used to work well, he used to be good to this person, but right now this person is not delivering up to the mark, but still this manager is treating them well. So there are two ways of looking at it. One is, as a manager, how do I uh, handle the situation? Yeah. And as a person who's going through such a toxic environment, how do they handle such a situation? Hmm. Right, very well uh, put. Yes, so with respect to toxic home environment, uh, what I would suggest is we often wait till the breaking point to inform our colleagues and supervisor that we're really stuck in a pickle. Mm -hmm. So do not wait until your work quality deteriorates so much that it becomes obvious and people then start asking. So if you feel there's going to come a time when you might need more space, more help, so be vocal about it. Uh, but Nandini, uh, uh, your work friends, even though we say terminologies like uh, uh, my team is like my family, they're definitely not a family. So we always draw the line between professional and personal life. So how much could we share with them? Where, where is the line? Right. So we need to differentiate between sharing and oversharing. Mm. So oversharing actually makes us feel weak and vulnerable and sometimes they're not able to look at their face after that. Okay. For instance, you are really complaining about your husband or mother-in-law. Tomorrow you might patch things with them. Mm. But later when you say something positive about your husband to this person, she's going to look at you in a very okay. strange manner. Mm. So I would say share but don't overshare. Don't go, don't go into each and every detail mm. of the fight or the argument or don't get too emotional in front of them. Rather, stick to the facts. The fact mm. is, things at home are not so great. You need some time to figure mm. things out. So right now, I am uh, I might be a little slow. slow. Okay, got I it. might need some time. That's mm. all. Just mm. three sentences is enough to convey what needs to be conveyed. Mm. So that's one thing. Second, uh, what I've noticed among employees is the minute they open their laptop and set out to do some work, they're having a lot of intrusive thoughts about what's happening at home. Mm. Constant worrying. Oh, I said that. Oh, he said that. What will happen now when I go home? So this has really worked for some of my clients, something called worrying time. So every day, set aside a time to worry. Mm. Say for example, 6.45 to 7 is worrying time. So now when your mind is projecting something, you can argue back and say, hey bro, listen, I've set a time for I you. Time for that. At that time, I will definitely address this worry, mm. not right now. And the most important part is when that time comes, you actually need to start mm. worrying. worrying about it. The more you force yourself to worry, you get bored of it. Mm. Imagine, no, at 6.30 you need to shut down everything and then start worrying. You mm. might not be in the mood to do it. Mm. So naturally, you know, you fall out of it. You don't feel like worrying about it okay. anymore. Okay. And the third thing is being in the present. Mm. When it comes to uh, family trouble, mm. we're either stuck in the past or looking at the future. future. Mm. But we can be in the present, in the mm. here and now, right now. So how do we come back to the present? Sometimes it's good to set a notification system in your phone or in your laptop that constantly reminds you at least one how once, be in the present, come back here. Mm. Or what you could do is a quick grounding exercise. Look around you, look at the space that you're sitting in and quickly identify five colors that you're seeing. Mm. Quickly notice any four sounds that you're hearing. Okay. Quickly uh, label any three objects that, that you see around yourself. So this will you know, bring your senses back to the present and remind you that, hey, you're not there, you're here. And right now, there is no trouble. Right now, that fight or it argument is not It might be a silly question happening. right now that I'm going to pose. Is it like running away from the present? You mean worrying about... And trying mm -hmm. to deviate with questions like this. Is it like trying to run away from the actual situation that is in front Absolutely. of me? Absolutely. See, that's the difference between thinking and worrying. No? Okay. Thinking will give us a solution. It's novel. Every thought is different. But worrying is repetitive. We keep thinking the same okay. thing again and again with no solution. Mm. So it's okay to think about family problems. But then thinking should yield a solution, an answer. But if that's not happening, then you're not thinking. You're worrying yeah, about so it. Right? And um, having a place just for you, somewhere where you can unwind just for five minutes, and choosing an activity that will improve the quality of your life. It could be anything like a long warm bath or a five minute walk or listening to a song, something, but you need to practice in some self-care because we need to accumulate positive experiences. Work is also challenging on some levels. Uh, home is also difficult. So where do we find that uh, slice of solace? Mm. So self-care is very, very important. And 
you are not alone here professional help is available be it family uh, difficulties or marital issues or difficulty with children there is family therapy there is couples therapy there is individual therapy so those are options that uh, one must definitely explore if they Wonderful. think that's feasible mm. and just some quick pointers on what you can do if you have a very demanding partner or a family one thing just like how we deal with a challenging box we need to uh, learn how to say no mm. right so we need to say this is something that i cannot do i'm sorry and we need to stick to it you say no and then they start pestering you and then you give in that's intermittent reinforcement mm. so they'll understand that oh if i ask him 10 times he'll do it okay so when you say no stick to it consistency second is uh, setting clear boundaries if um, they are forcing you to do something like take a call when you're in a meeting or rush back home and something's important for you at work tell them give them options see mm. this is one option that i can give you right now this is a second option but this third option you're asking for i may not be able mm. to give it so choose between these two things okay. right and also encouraging them to take up individual therapy mm. that might also uh, help okay but most importantly we need to decatastrophize the situation family is definitely important to all of us but then again family is just one domain of life mm. right just like how work is one domain family is also one domain so if we have like a catastrophizing scale from 0 to 100 0 being very pleasant 100 being worst mm. we always give a number of 90 or 100 okay. to family uh, mm. difficulties mm. but ask yourself does it deserve to that bigger number mm. of 90 or 100 imagine three most valuable things in your life and they remove tomorrow how much would you rate that mm. you would definitely give it 100 mm. but if you give that 100 then does this deserve 100 mm. or maybe a 50 So put it into perspective. It is bad, but is it awful? Mm. It's a bad day, but not a bad life necessarily. Not a bad family. Is it end of, end of the road kind of thing? Yes. So these are some pointers to keep in mind.